welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson podcast. You can visit Dr. Johnson's blog at benwoodpost.com. Dr. Johnson's works can be found at drbenwoodjohnson.com. You can also support Dr. Johnson on Patreon, the link to which is in the description. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the Ben Wood Johnson podcast. Uh, today is March 8, 2021. This is podcast number 63. Again, I am so happy to have you back one more time to talk about philosophy. Uh, today, we're going to have a great podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, legal obligation. And the conversation today, it is still about the concept of of obedience to the extent that the individual chooses to obey. The focus is on the individual in terms of the evolution of the individual because the individual does not wake up one morning and decides, hey, I'm, I'm going to obey the law. There ought to be a mechanism that induces the individual to induce the self. That mechanism is based on a process and that process, as I will debate, is the concept of, of learning. The individual learns to obey on the basis of the possibility that he might get hurt he might lose something so the obligation itself is based on the threat the individual is expected to behave and if he does not behave there's a threat of something that is going to happen to him in order to avoid that the individual has no choice but to obey but here we talk about the notion of consent in terms of obligation and we discuss how the two cannot exist on the same playing field so without further ado let us delve right into it An important facet of legal obligation is the individual. As we have discussed in previous podcast, it's this idea that the individual plays an important role in how he or she construes the obligation that is expected of him. So, in other words, the, the person is supposed to create the mechanism or the conditions which would allow him to obligate the self or which would make it possible for others or the collective as a whole to obligate the individual how does that happen well in general when we're talking about the individual in terms of how he prepares himself to obey we're talking about a transformation we're talking about a process we're talking about um, a certain evolution in the in the person whereby the person develops a level of awareness of the self in relation to others around him. So, during that process, the individual learns how to be. The individual learns to obey. He learns the rule of society. He learns the do's and don'ts of society. He learns how to behave himself in society. And as he learns to be in society, he is evolving as a person. He is transforming as a person, whereby he is inculcating into himself a model of being. Of course, that model is based on the, on the parameters of the society itself. But the individual learns to be. And the learning process is introspective to the extent that the individual is sort of making himself do things that are expected from him at a particular point in time. As the person learns how to be, he develops a sense of self. And that sense of self, 
is going to determine how the individual construes his responsibilities towards the society as a whole, towards the self even, but the, the individual learns how to be and how to obey. This psychological process happens um, subconsciously many a time. So in other words, the individual is not necessarily aware of his learning process. In other words, he's not necessarily aware of what's happening. Subconsciously, the individual is amassing knowledge, skills, and he's also building himself to be a certain way, which is going to be in accordance with the expectations of the society itself. And that is why we have to go back to the child. And that is why in the beginning, I talked about Piaget, I talked about Bandura, and I talk about, you know, the psychology of learning, okay? Because what happens is that the individual as an, at an early age is taught to be. And that information will, was conveyed to the individual with a threat. So it is not that the individual learned to be um, willingly. It is the case that the individual was forced to learn to be. In the previous podcast, we talked about the parents, or at least the role of parents, the role of a schooling system, an educational system, the role of authorities within the society or within the environment in which the individual evolves or the child evolves. All of these are important factors in threatening the individual. In other words, the individual learns to obey because of the threat that the, these authorities represent to him at a particular moment in time. So any sense of obligation that the individual develops as a result of that learning procedure or learning process is going to be based on that threat or, or, or on the fear of either bodily harm or bodily harm itself. But the individual is going to be afraid of repercussions, which are usually going to, which are based on what he or she learns as he was going through that grueling process of learning to be. Okay? So for example, if as a, as a child, you go to school, you learn to obey. The, the teacher, you learn to obey school aides, you learn to obey the principal and any authority within the school. And the threat that is usually used or leveraged against the child is the threat of expulsion, threat of detention, uh, threat of perhaps suspension and, and so on. So the individual, as the child, learns at an early age that his failure to obey could result in him losing Whatever it is that he is doing, whatever it is that he is supposed to do. So, of course, we're going to look at the, at least in subsequent podcasts, we're going to talk about the psychological effects of the individual being expected to be a certain way. And when he's not able to be that way, not necessarily because of his inability to be that way, rather, rather because of someone's, uh, you know, somebody decides he's not going to be that way. So it creates a different set of, of realities within the individual, within the psyche of the individual, which, like I said, we will talk about uh, as we move further in this, in this series of podcasts. But the individual, to say it again, is expected to be a certain way. He knows of that, expect of, of that expectation and he is is working towards that. But that expectation sometimes can be impeded or can be prevented or hampered by entity X or Y, in which case the individual is going to avoid finding himself in a situation where what he is supposed to do, what he is expected to do, which is originally based on a threat, he might not be able to do it if he doesn't do this or that. So in other words, there might be another threat that threatens the individual to do what he was supposed to do under threat. 
Now, again, when we're talking about threat in terms of legal obligation, uh, we're not talking about a conspiracy in the sense that there's a conspiracy to make the individual be a certain way. It is just the way society works. It is just the way society is structured, whereby the individual is expected to be a certain way, but that expectation sometimes may not be, at least the individual may not be able to fulfill that expectation because of another threat, because of another obligation. So obligation one may impede obligation two or obligation three may affect the individual's capacity to fulfill obligation one. So the different obligations within the society, within the societal environment sometimes affect uh, the way the individual construe his obligation at a particular point in time. And that is why it is important for the individual to go through this ruling learning process where the individuals will learn the do's and don'ts of society. The individual learns to differentiate himself in relation to X, Y, and Z. And if the individual finds himself in a particular situation, he is able to see, at least to understand, the implications of doing X, Y, and Z in relation to A, B, C, if you will. Okay, So the individual is able to sort of make a, a clear distinction between those two. The expectation to do X, Y, and Z and the obligation which might also come with an expectation to do A, B, C. So the individual is sort of aware of those sort of nuances. Of course, sometimes they overlap, but the individual is aware of them. And to give you an example, I mean, let's go back to the example of a child. Uh, the child might be obligated to go to school, but the child is also obligated to behave himself when he's in school. And he's also obligated to work hard or at least to get good grades as he's in school. So all of which are obligation, which sometimes overlap, but the individual, or the, the child, learns to make the distinction between those different obligations in relation to the overall obligation, which is to become somebody in society. Okay, So all of these, sometimes they overlap or they contradict one another, but the individual must be able to situate the self. The individual must be able to sort of differentiate the self in relation to X, Y, and Z or A, B, C in terms of what the, ind the individual is supposed to do and what is expected from the individual at a particular moment in time. But for the individual to arrive at this point, there ought to be a process. It's a learning process where that starts or that begins when the individual was a child. And that learning process started with the threat of X, Y, and Z. And the individual learns to avoid having to face those threats. Um, and at the same time, the individual learns to carry out or to carry out or to fulfill his obligation towards whoever is expecting him to behave in a certain way. And, and that is why when we're talking about consent, we see the 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 dichotomy here, right? Because the notion of consent implies that the child, in this example, consented to be that way from the start consented to go to school, agreed to follow those authorities, agreed to abide by whatever the expectation that his parents, you know, lay on him at a specific point in time, whatever the obligation his school teachers or school principal would, would not put on him. So the, the child supposedly agreed to all of this, when in fact, that is not the case at all. Is the threat that is making the child obey nothing else the threat and that threat does not have to be does not have to be a physical threat it could be a threat of a, of a social um, of a social nature right for example you go to school to learn to behave or you, you go to school to learn so you could get a diploma so you could become somebody in life okay so you want that okay as a child you understand the need to become somebody in society and the possibility of not doing that could become a threat. See, if you have a teacher who doesn't like you, uh, or you happen to find yourself in a situation where you could be expelled from school, right? So every child, if, if a child wants to be somebody, if the child understands the necessity to go to school, 
to accomplish something, that child is going to abide by whatever that teacher wants from him or whatever that school principal wants from him because the child wants to accomplish that end goal, which in this case is to graduate from high school and be able to go to college and become somebody. So the, the original goal or expectation which was induced unto the child may become uh, an important goal which is going to sort of become that original goal may in and of itself become a threat. In other words, the child is forced to behave not necessarily because he knows the professor is going to punish him, but because he doesn't want to lose the opportunity to graduate from high school. See? So that can also become a threat. So it is important to consider that as we move along here. But the idea of consent implies that the child initially agreed to all of that. The child agreed to whatever happens to him within the educational system. And as we've discussed earlier, that is not the case at all. No living being, at least at birth, is conscious of the self to the extent where the individual, at least the being, is conscious, is aware of the obligation to be a certain way. That is something that comes over time. Over time, the individual learns to be a certain way. So the consent itself could only come after the individual has become aware of the expectation. In other words, there cannot be an expectation unless the person or the entity who is expected to be in a, in a particular way understands the implications of that obligation or of, the, of that expectation. So in order for the individual to consent, at least to, to consciously consent of, of X, Y, and Z, that individual must have been aware of whatever that expectation is. In the case of a person, of a child, that is not the case because nobody was born with an innate understanding of what is expected of you. You have to first become conscious of yourself, become conscious of the people around you so you could become conscious of what it is that they want from you or what it is that you want from them. So that that is a phase, that, that's an evolution in the human being in particular. So the person has to grow into that, grow into this this phase or at least this, this, this psychological maturity, if you will. So the consent itself at that point could not have been given or could not have been implied because the individual was not aware of it. I had no reason to be aware of it. So it, 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 it had to come afterwards. The consent must have come afterwards, not beforehand. So the person at birth cannot consent, should not or could not consent. It has to be after the individual is aware. But by the time the individual is aware, the individual has been sort of living under this duress, to put it this way, not that extreme, but the individual has been living under these conditions where his livingness, his beingness is conditioned to threats, whether it's threats of losing this, uh, threats of, 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 of bodily harm, or whatever the threats may be, the individual is living, living knowing that there are certain expectations that he has to fulfill, and not being able to do that, he also knows, comes with certain threats. In other words, there are certain uh, things that might happen if he doesn't live up to the expectation of either mom and dad, um, school settings, and other entities within society. So as the individual learns to behave according to what's expected of him, he is likely to sort of surrender the self to those expectations depending on, on what it is that the individual is trying to accomplish in accordance to what is expected of him to accomplish. In other words, the individual could not have a sense of obligation in the beginning of his existence or from the start because the individual could not fathom himself in relation to others. Again, to, to be obligated, you have to be conscious of yourself and be conscious of what it is that is obligated from you. You have, to be ob you have to be conscious of yourself, conscious of others, and be conscious of what it is that they want from you. Until then, you cannot 
be conscious. You cannot be sort of obligated because, and you, you cannot consent. You could not consent to obedience at that point because you're simply not aware. So that obedience or the way it is assumed is fallacious from the start because the individual, the individual could not have, have consented to that from the start. And even if mom and dad were to sort of agree that I consent for my child, that consent would be invalid for mom and dad cannot consent for the individual. Mom and dad are separate entities within themselves. The individual is his own entity, he's his own self. So he has to come to a point where he consents to be this way or that way. And like I said, this is not possible until the individual reaches a certain age, uh, a certain degree of awareness of the, not only the self, but the others. So of course, that awareness itself can be inculcated into the individual. In other words, the individual might be forced to see the self a certain way. The individual might, might be constrained to see the self a certain way. Again, it is always gonna, going to be a part of the, the forced obligation, forced consent. And the dichotomy here is that in order to have obligation, you have to have consent. In order to have consent, you have to have obligation. So in other words, you cannot have both at the same time. One has to come before the other. It's either or, it's one or the other. It's either you consent to be obligated or you obligate, you're obligated to consent. Okay, so both of them cannot be together. It's one has to come before the other. One has to precede the other. And usually it's the obligation that precedes the consent. You do not consent yourself to obligate yourself. Rather, you're obligated to consent. And to give you an example, the child does not agree to go to school. Rather, the child is obligated to go to school. And that obligation must be consented. Because if the child does not go to school, then the child does not agree or consent to go to school. So the obligation itself must be there before the child can consent to it. So that consent in and of itself is not intrinsic to the extent that it is induced by a threat of whatever that threat might be. So the consent in and of itself must be coercive, must be imposed, must be forced. So that individual does not or did not consent initially to be forced. The individual was forced to consent. And so, the, so the, 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 con, the consent itself is fallacious to the extent that it is not a normal, it is not a natural consent. The individual is forced to be a certain way. If there is consent, there can be no obligation. If there is an obligation, there is no need for consent. And that's the dichotomy that we have to consider here whenever we're talking about legal obligation. Okay? Whenever we're talking about legal obligation, we have to understand if there is a consent, there cannot be an obligation. Because if, if I want to go to school, then nobody's forcing me to go to school. Right? If I want to do this, then nobody's forcing me to do it. I'm not obligated to do it because I want to do it. If I want to obey the law, then there's no need for me to be obligated to obey the law because I already consented to obey the law. In the same way, if I am obligated to obey the law, then there's no need for me to consent because I'm obligated to do it. So you cannot have it both ways. It's one or the other. It's either you consented to do it or you are obligated to do it. And that is why an obligation always annuls any form of consent in the being, right? So this idea that you're supposed to obey and at the same time you agreed to obey, you cannot have those two understandings, those two notions in the same intellectual breath, intellectual spectrum, because they, they don't jibe. You know, you cannot consent to be obligated. If you consent, you cannot be obligated. And if you're obligated, then you cannot consent. There's no need for consent because you are obligated. Okay? So the concept of obligation, or in this case, legal obligation, in its most intrinsic sense, does not imply consent, does not imply that the individual has a say. Anytime we're talking about legal obligation, what we're talking about, we're talking about a law that annuls any consent, any desire, any control of the part of the citizen who is obligated to obey. 
if there's a legal if there's a legal obligation that means there's a law that obligates you and whatever you think of that law is irrelevant however you want to obey is irrelevant because the law annuls any sense of self you might have had in relation to what the requirements of the laws of the law is or what the expectation of the law is whenever we're talking about legal obligation in the individual you have to understand that if there's an obligation there cannot be consent and if there's a consent then there's no need for obligation either or both cannot exist on the same playing field and that is what the point of consent and obligation is at least within the context of a legal obligation